Hi, I'm Bob Cohen, manager of Evoca Water Technologies Service Training. In this video segment, we discuss basic reverse osmosis data collection and evaluation for commercial and industrial customers. If you do not know the basics of RO systems, please refer to our video titled Introduction to RO. Before starting any job, pause to consider safety. I recommend the following minimum personal protective equipment safety glasses, steel-toed boots, and water-resistant gloves if you are handling RO membranes. Before performing any task, do a Safe Performance Self-Assessment, or SPSA. In an SPSA, you identify and minimize risks by asking yourself, how badly could performing this task hurt me? How do you know if your RO system is working properly? You collect data to determine the following. Are the RO membranes fouled? Are the RO membranes damaged? Are the internal O-rings damaged? The data you collect is feed water, product, and reject pressures. Also, feed water conductivity and temperature, and product water conductivity. If the feed water temperature and conductivity are constant, the data tells you the following. A higher feed water pressure indicates RO membrane fouling. A combination of lower feed water pressure and higher product conductivity indicates RO membrane damage. If the feed water pressure is relatively unchanged and the product conductivity is higher, internal O-rings are probably damaged. If your feed water comes from surface water such as a river or lake, or from different sources such as two wells, feed water conductivity changes frequently. To account for changes in feed water conductivity, we use a calculation called percent rejection instead of product water conductivity to determine if RO membranes or internal O-rings are damaged. The formula for percent rejection is percent rejection equals 100 times 1 minus product conductivity divided by feed water conductivity. For example, if feed water conductivity is 500 microsiemens and product conductivity is 10 microsiemens, percent rejection is 98. If the feed water temperature is constant, the data tells you the following. Higher feed water pressure indicates RO membrane fouling. A combination of lower feed water pressure and lower percent rejection indicates RO membrane damage. If the feed water pressure is relatively unchanged and the percent rejection is lower, internal O-rings are probably damaged. If you are not in the tropics and your feed water comes from surface water, such as a river or lake, or from different sources, feed water temperature changes frequently. This change in feed water temperature affects the driving pressure needed to force water through RO membranes. Colder water requires more driving pressure to provide the same flow through RO membranes, and warmer water requires less driving pressure to provide the same flow through RO membranes. Here is a temperature correction chart that shows the effect of water temperature on driving pressure. For example, it takes 50% more driving pressure at 55 degrees Fahrenheit than at 77 degrees Fahrenheit. A change in feed water temperature can mask membranes fouling and indicate RO membrane damage when there is none. So how do you unmask the effect of feed water temperature on RO data? You normalize the data against baseline data. The normalization spreadsheet gives us two values, normalized permeate flow percent and normalized rejection percent. If you normalize your RO data, your rules of thumb are lower normalized permeate flow percent indicates RO membrane fouling. And if normalized permeate flow percent is less than 85%, the RO membranes should be cleaned. A combination of higher normalized permeate flow percent and lower normalized rejection percent indicates RO membrane damage. If normalized permeate flow percent is greater than 110 and normalized rejection percent decreases more than 1%, the RO membranes are damaged and should be replaced. If the normalized permeate flow percent is relatively unchanged and the normalized rejection percent is lower, internal O-rings are probably damaged. If the normalized permeate flow percent is relatively unchanged and the normalized rejection percent decreases more than one, 
Additional troubleshooting is needed to determine which O-rings are damaged. Here's a typical normalization spreadsheet. Baseline data should be collected about two days after new RO membranes are installed. Here's an example of data collected January 1st and June 1st. Without taking feed water temperature into account, the lower feed water pressure and higher product conductivity in the June data indicate RO membrane damage. The normalized percent permeate flow, which takes the changed feed water temperature into account, actually shows RO membrane fouling because the normalized percent permeate flow is lower than baseline. We recommend you collect RO data at least once per week and have a service technician from an outside vendor evaluate the data at least quarterly. An Evoqua technician can evaluate the data to detect fouling or membrane damage and recommend corrective action before a catastrophic failure interrupts your supply of purified water. Thanks for watching our video on data collection and evaluation. Please visit our website, www.evoqua.com, for more information on reverse osmosis.